Hi, I'm Michelle, and I'm here with Tyler Hollander, a young filmmaker who is a student at North Carolina School of the Arts and who also already has his own YouTube channel. Hi, Tyler. Hello. Thank I, you so much. Yeah, and that's how I found you. I found you from your YouTube channel. Um, what I searched, in case you want to, you know, people always like to know what search comes up. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I was searching screen, screenwriting tips, mm -hmm. and you popped right up. Right up at the top. Oh, awesome. So isn't that awesome? It's awesome yeah. to hear that, right? Yeah, no, because I, I do the same thing. Like back when I was first starting, I would go, I would search all these tips, and I'd see uh, channels like Film Riot or DSLR Guide now, and it's like those guys, like they, they've made it. Yeah. And it's, 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 real, it's cool. I mean, I'm nowhere near, you know, their level in terms of popularity, but it, it is it's really cool. Yeah, and I, I love the way, because I always look for short videos. Um, you know, they're the hour-long videos of uh, people talking about how they screenwrite. But what I what made uh, me press yours was that it was short, and it was right to the point. And I, yeah. I liked it, because I've been really looking into screenwriting and talking to screenwriters more. And um, I think that the art of it is so amazing. Like, And, and you do short films. And that's yes. a different kind of a thing, which we'll talk about. But it's like when I go to a movie, and I'm sure you do this too, it's, it's like I, I watch for those certain breaks that they uh, always talk about. And I've always done it, and I didn't know what I was doing until I looked into it more. I was like, I used to yeah. do that. You know, like, oh, this is this, and I can go to the bathroom now. <laughs> and this is, you know, <laughs> this break. And, and yeah. how they set up a movie. And, I mean, do you walk into a movie theater, and do you, like, mentally, like, Oh, that's that. Oh, that's that. Movie. Yeah, I mean, ever, ever since, since I got, got into filmmaking, it, it's become harder to watch a movie without, yes. or to go into a movie and just watch it as like an audience member rather than a filmmaker. I always think about, oh, that's a cool shot. Like, how'd they do that? Story structure, all that stuff. Yeah, um, and you look more into it. See, I don't even think that way yet. Like, I still yeah. just think plot. And, and, you know, the way it's set up and the, and the, um, the dialogue, I, I watch dialogue, right. but, um, yeah. why don't you just tell me, like, I want to hear, like, how did you realize this is what you wanted to do? Um, well, so when I was younger, I've always been a very creative person. Like, um, I used to put on little plays in my parents' basement, uh, back when I was younger. I remember we did, um, we did Tarzan, we did Beauty and the Beast, um, I think I tried Phantom of the Opera as well because my dad, my dad took me to um, – we went to Phantom of the Opera, and that was amazing. Um, my parents took me to Beauty and the Beast on Broadway when I was very young. Um, so that's kind of how I got into it. And the problem was, like, I would never finish anything that I started. And I tried to – I tried to draw. I tried to paint um, a whole bunch of different things. And then – we had to make a video in eighth grade, I remember. We went to Charleston, um, South Carolina, for just a trip uh, with our English class. And I've been we there went, many times, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah. I love Charleston. Uh, but we went on a bunch of ghost tours, and um, we had to take pictures and kind of create like a documentary based on that. And ever since then, I was like, okay, I enjoy this. And I was actually finishing those assignments, and then I... I did a whole bunch more for school, and then it just caught on, and I couldn't imagine doing anything else. What, okay, so did you find ghosts? I think, okay, so we took a picture, uh -huh. and it was kind of like a, um, it was like a thermal, or yeah, it was something like the, the hot parts would turn up like white or blue or whatever, and we had this picture of a house, and there was like this figure, it looked like a person sitting on the steps, Maybe we were just reading into it. I don't know, but we might have seen one. Not sure. <laughs> I because you know that kind of that's a kind of another like interest of mine. But I've never been anywhere wow. of that. But I've watched videos on YouTube where they like catch them on camera. You know, like yeah. it's supposed to be a, a great way to to find them. So uh, I just wondered. Yeah. I never did the ghost tours, but anyway. So yeah. So you found yeah. out that you could like actually like you were interested enough that you finished mm -hmm. the school project, and then yeah. you realize like that's. You know, and, and yeah. when I was watching your making of, okay, so uh, let's talk about Bon Voyage. Okay, okay. First when, and watching the making of, and I was like, I watched it differently. You made me watch it differently because of watching the making of, you know, cause I could see cool. what you were looking for, for shots. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay. Cause I, like I said, that's not really my thing, but I thought you explained mm -hmm. it well. And I mean, the actors 
Are they friends of yours? Yeah, well, I, I met them through a casting call for the movie. I remember I put it out on, like, Craigslist and uh -huh. this other side, and they sent in auditions, and I thought they were great. And luckily, everything worked out. They were great to work with, and now we keep in touch. I'm working on another short film with uh, the guy who, the younger uh, the younger kid in the uh, movie. Yeah. Uh, Steven, we're making a movie. Um, I still keep in touch with Jerome. So it's a, it was a very, we had an instant connection it was very Great. intense, yeah. I have to say. It was Thanks. very, <laughs> it was very, very intense. And, um, but I just thought that they're acting like, I was like, if he just like picked them, you know, like they're just his friends. Like he did really good. Like they're really good, you know, actors. Yeah, but, um, so, so the way the film ends, okay. I was like, so that's it. So he just tosses them and that's it. Right. He tosses them down into the stream. Yep. We'll see. You know, it, it's kind of open to interpretation. Not necessarily interpretation, but your your mind kind of wanders and you think, okay, what could happen here? So I think open ended open ended films to me are always my favorite. Did you Did you watch um, Did you go to see Allied? That new um, uh, No, I have. Film? Okay, that is an open ended. You walk out like, and I'm usually a closed like I like a nice ending. I, cause, but mm -hmm. but then I realized like. No, I think you do like the, because you walk out of there and you're like, ah, what happened? I want to know exactly what yeah. happened, you know? I think as an audience member, you're just more involved because you're coming up with, you're putting the pieces together, you're making the connections. Right. And then you can argue with your friends about it after you leave, you know, yeah. who thinks what. Because <laughs> the people I went with, we all had a different opinion as to how that movie should have ended, yeah. you know? So you got to go see it if you, if you haven't seen it. Brad Pitt doesn't, yeah. you know, make a bad movie usually, so it's... <laughs> It's a good movie, but okay. So yeah. I just, I mean, when you sat down, okay, how did you come up with the concept for Bon Voyage? Like you, just take me through the process of like your brain. So you're, cause you said like, first you just throw out ideas, right? And then you just see what sticks or what you can. Yeah. So this one was a, a bit different and it kind of just came out of nowhere. Um, this was, we came up with the idea uh, back when I was in my first year. Um, at film school, I'm in my third year now at UMC nice. School of Arts. Um, so it was just me and my friends one night at dinner. We were like, we should make a movie over the summer. And someone's like, what if there's a dead body in the trunk? And it kind of just came from there. And then we would uh, we would meet like a few times a week and just throw ideas out. And then what wound up happening was uh, my friend who I was writing with, he actually started writing his own version. And then we took them two different ways. Um, his is called Hero. Uh, his name's Tommy Jackson, if you want to be interested in that. Right. Um, but they basically started out as the same story, and then we just branched off in our different directions. Um, but yeah, it just it just kind of came naturally. Um, it was a very intuitive process. Do you, started. when you're making a short film as opposed to a long film, do you still have the same kind of um, outline that you would make for the for the dialogue? Um, well, I've never, I haven't made a feature yet. I'm hoping to soon. I'm actually writing one with a friend. Well, I figured um, you'd have, since you're at film school, they probably tell you. How to yeah. Um, I mean, the essentials are pretty much the same. Uh, you know, the structure, I mean, you, there's a lot of three act structure, short films. There's others that are kind of more just slice of life and being in the moment. Um, so I don't, for me, it's just always a very intuitive process, and I'm just writing based on, you know, what I know, the films that I've seen. Like you were saying before, like you go into a movie and you, like, instinctively see, you know, the structure, and, you know, you, you know more about the story. And that's the same, same process I have, really. It's just an intuitive thing. Okay, so your number two thing was, like, um, get a personal connection to the story. Okay, so mm -hmm. what was your personal connection? Like, which, which character did you feel for? The one that was, like, going off to school or the guy that was, like, freaking out and just, <laughs> this bad, you know, like, <laughs> or did you see something like that? Or did you just come up with it? Like, did you, did you ever know kids that, you know, did drugs like that and, and it inspired you to, you know, give a message of some kind? No, no, it was more of... Um... I, I kind of saw myself in both characters, not in the situation itself, but kind of 
the situation they were in, like making the the main idea of the film was you make one bad decision and that can snowball into something bigger and you feel like you can't really get out of it. And so it's a relatable feeling. So it's a, it's a very universal um, film in that way. So I guess just the, when I was talking about personal connection, it's more about the emotions that the character's feeling right. rather than oh, being rather in that than situation. Their situation more. And, and actually, yeah. for, you know, I have children your age and I, I have to say that just, if you understand that at your age, you've, you've got a pretty good, you know, future ahead of you because I don't think a lot of kids understand that one bad decision, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, he got himself in a situation, one bad, you know, like he said, you know, we did one last hit of heroin uh -huh. or whatever it was and, and look what happened, you know? So I think that for somebody that's in college and your age, like that's very mature. So I'm really impressed with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> and then, okay. So what I really liked was the coincidences that kept carrot into trouble but not out of mm. trouble yeah okay I love that because I never thought about that when I was watching and then when you said it I was like oh right like there's always coincidence you don't want a coincidence out of your problem they mm. have to figure their way out of the problem exactly right exactly. that was so I love that that was awesome and I really haven't seen that anywhere to tell you the truth and yeah, I've read that, um, a couple of books about it you know screen yeah that comes from uh there's this article called Pixar's 20, 21, 22 rules of storytelling. And that was something that really stood out to me. Um, that, that article is just great. Um, and you know, Pixar, all their films for the most part are really, really well sold. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, having the characters figure their way out. And also in life, there's usually not easy way, an easy way out of things. When right. you would want there to be well, things right. that kind of happen to you to get into that situation, right. so it's that's another it's a relatable human right. um, connection that we have. With yeah, that. yeah, I just love the way that you presented that, and you know, I took my granddaughters to see uh, my grandchildren, and took to see Moana this weekend. Oh, let's see that. And did you see it? No, I really want to. Yeah, I mean. To, and like you said, I mean, I don't know. I think it's Disney. I don't think it's Pixar. Are, are they? Disney. They might be collaborate. Are they collaborate now? Or I don't know. Uh, Disney owns Pixar. Oh, okay. Um, Pixar's underneath them, but they they do their they're separate. They have their own branches. Well, you know, Moana, like she. That's kind of what happens to her. And after I I had watched your video before I went to see it, and I was noticing that she kept getting herself, you know, coincidences that were getting her into, but then she had to keep finding these ways and it, I'd have to say she did it at least three times. And which also, uh -huh. it was interesting. My grandchildren are four and under and, mm. but as an adult, I was like, yeah, they aren't really getting this, you know, like they, of course, yeah. Yeah, like all the, you know, the characters and the, the technology and all of that stuff. But um, at one of the best parts of the movie, my three-year-old grandson said, this is kind of boring. And I was like, are you kidding me? This is great. <laughs> like, yeah. So. See, that's what's so great about Pixar movies, about a lot of the Disney movies now, because they're for everybody. Right. Like, kids, they see like these flashy, colorful images and it's, it's cool. And, you know, the characters sound, sound interesting and there's, you know, funny shapes and yeah, you know, they can, they like that, but, you know, we kind of see further into it. And we see the story and what they're trying to say. Yeah. And, you know, I haven't seen yeah, one since true. Frozen and I can't believe the technology since Frozen. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, that's just going in leaps and bounds. And I was talking to um, a screenwriting professor at NYU this weekend. I did a telephone mm. call with him and it'll be coming out, but I asked him if, you know, because of big, blockbuster movies like that like what does he tell his screenwriters you know that are students like does he does it feel like there's just you know how are you going to break into the business of this and he said that um even though the the big budget companies like disney and you know those seem very like it's really hard to get into but he said what he tells them is that tv shows have never been more abundant because of netflix mm -hmm. and amazon and he oh, said yeah. he kind of steers them towards that too, 
you know, because if you feel yeah. like, but what I like is that you just go out there and you're just like, whatever, I'm just going to put it up on YouTube and you get all these mm -hmm. hits and, you know, <laughs> it's like, I like the, you know, I like your ambition about that because I think it could be very overwhelming for somebody your age to say, uh, how about yeah. me? You know, what, what am I going to do in this industry? You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm really scared, and I'm also very excited to get out of school and go out to LA. I'll be moving out there. You will. Um, That's awesome. To, yeah, I'll try to get my foot in the door. It it is very overwhelming to think about it, but just got to do it. I I heard this story about Steven Spielberg, and you can tell me whether it's true or not. If you heard the same story, or because yeah. I don't know if it's true, but supposedly he when he was young, he was walking around. I guess it was easier to to walk around some of the lots, and he just kind of went in, and nobody noticed that he wasn't supposed to be there, and just kind of joined in until the and every day would oh, show yeah. up until yeah I heard about that yeah you know it's like wow I wish, don't you wish it was that easy because wouldn't you start hanging around lots like right away. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure security is quite a bit tighter now. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> picturing anybody walking around any movie lots anytime. <laughs> no. Uh. But I always thought that that was a really cool, you know, not that he didn't have to prove himself because he absolutely did. But you know, uh. I look at your stuff and I think for your age and for you know what you're doing, you have you know you've got a great future ahead of you. I really see good Thank things you. happening for you. And you know, just like Thanks. I said, just the fact that you put it out there. You put it all, you know, the making of, the everything. I don't know what else you could possibly, you know, to, to get your feet, like to, you know, the production part of it. I'm sure it's not easy. I mean, to have to do it out of your home and, you know, and like you said, it takes a lot of time. I guess, was it Bon Voyage? No, was it The Machine? Which one of them took a long time? I think it was The Machine. Uh, both of them. Both of um, them? I think The Machine took longer. Um I, that was a while ago. I think that was like three years ago, three and a half years ago now. Uh, but Bon Voyage, that took a while because we shot over the summer. And then we we had to shoot uh, the opening of the movie back here at school. Um, oh. And we actually shot right outside my door right now. Nice. Um, so basically we filmed that when we got back to school. But then school happened and we just couldn't get anything done until probably Christmas break. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that, that took a while because of that. And then we had um, our composer who was working. He did the movie for free. Uh, his name's Alistair Cooper. He's amazing. Um, he was doing it for free, but he also had some paid projects. So those, you know, were more important. Um, but, yeah, it, it's a very slow process. <laughs> well, what about the music part of it? Like, I really like the way you the music was done. I mean, it built, built up the suspense. I mean, mm -hmm. do you just, do you have somebody that does the music or do you actually do the music too? Yeah, that was the, the guy I was talking about, um, Al oh, okay. Cooper. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, he did, he did the score and, oh, um, the score. Okay. I, I think I found him on, um, I think free sound, not free sound.org. Uh, I think free music archive or something like that. I was just looking for music for the movie that I could, you know, I was hoping to use tracks that were already written, and then I came across him, and then I figured I'd send him an email. Oh, okay, and that's the part. Wanted right. to do it. Uh, that's awesome. So, that's awesome. Yeah, I got really lucky. The the machine. Okay, so here's another you know compliment. So I am a crocheter, right? That's what I do, and for everybody, I crochet all the time, and that's when I watch YouTube because I can crochet mm. and watch YouTube, right? So I was like, all right, I'm gonna put this movie on, and. And I had to keep going back, you know, most movies, I can crochet, I can read directions and watch the movie. The Machine, I had to, I was like, wait a second, what just happened? <laughs> I keep going back, like, it was definitely not a movie that I couldn't just glance at and know exactly what was happening, you know, and, and I guess you decided to star in it and, and be a major player for it, which was awesome. <laughs> Did you like that? could not find anybody. What? It was it was so hard to find actors, so I just I just had to do it because we went for it, and else. it was perfect. I thought you did great, and, yeah. and the other guy, <laughs> he was amazing. Is was he just a friend, or did you also hire him? Yeah, uh, Chance. Uh, we went to high school together, and oh. then um, so we made that after we graduated. Uh, we both went to community college for a year because I I applied to. You went to School of the Arts, which is where I am now. I applied there, and I didn't get it in the first time. So that really 
it really pushed me, and I made the machine right after that, kind of in response to that. Um, so, yeah, okay. but, no, that's great. Yeah, so, okay, so if, um, for a student, for somebody like, say, in high school who says, okay, this is what I want to do, what advice would you give them as to what they would do from high school to getting into school? Just so you can, you know, help whoever is, you know, because I, I think there's a lot of kids out there like you and, you know, you didn't get discouraged and you kept at it. And, you know, so mm -hmm. what would you say, like what they should, you know, focus on? Yeah, well, the, the big piece of advice that you hear from everybody is you just got to do it because um, it's so easy now. You know, everyone has a camera. If you have a phone, you can make a movie. Right. Um, so you got to do it. But after you do it, you really have to figure out if you really care about doing it and I mean that really applies for to any profession really like don't do it unless you really care um, that's what I always say right um, it's because you you can't force somebody to care about about anything um, before I got into filmmaking I wanted to be a veterinarian I think I want to be an astronaut at some point <laughs> I want to be a lawyer you know because of the money but I could never see myself doing that. Like I just did not care about that and nobody could force me to. Right. Um, so just keep, if you really love doing this, you just gotta, gotta make movies. Now when you um, apply, do you have to have any kind of, um, a resume of, you know, is there anything they can do to help? Um, you know, cause I know it is so competitive. Like, do you suggest mm -hmm, they is. do anything? Like, do you, did you submit anything, um, that you'd made? Yeah, I submitted um, about like 10 minutes worth of work that I did. Um, I submitted a short film and then um, kind of like a, I called it a progress reel. Um, mm -hmm. It's basically everything I had done from when I started until that point. Um, so yeah, just, just you got to do stuff and, um, you know, hopefully you're proud of it and then you could put that out there. Um, I know for UNC School of the Arts, um, there's an interview process, so you basically, you have your reel, then you go in, um, you write a little short story, they give you 15 minutes to write it, and then you go into the interview, you um, basically tell your story, and then uh, you just talk about why you want to go to the school, why you are into filmmaking. Um, so yeah, I mean, you just as long as you have stuff, as long as you're passionate about it, and you care, uh, you should be good, you should be well on your way. That's great advice. That's what I was wondering yeah. whether they had to, you know, because I have kids that, that are college age and you always want to know, like, what ups your chances for getting into, you know, mm -hmm. that college. So um, that's pretty awesome. But, okay, so we can't end this without talking about Star Wars because I see oh that God. you are a huge – but I see a Lord of the yes. Rings poster behind you. So Those are my favorite movies. Well, I I'm reading The Hobbit them. right now with my one son who's 13. And he's loving it. And my all my children have loved uh, Lord of the Rings. All of them. I mean, that's just, mm -hmm. you know, for your nice. age. But the mm -hmm. new, what do, you, what do you say about the new Star Wars that's coming out? I, As a Star Wars days. fan. Okay, what do you say? Oh, my God. I, I'm not going to be able to control myself going to that screening. <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to function on the way to the theater. Thankfully, somebody else is driving, going with a group of friends. And we're just... <sighs> It's seven days. Got to get through it. Okay. It's a little uh, star. But even though you're not, like, disappointed that it's not, like, Star Wars. Like, it's not the same characters. It's just, uh, mm -hmm. right? Isn't that it? No, nope, but it's son, Star Wars. My 17-year-old son was trying to explain this to me the other night. So, I mean, it's not. It's just one of the – it's just a part of, right? It's just Star Wars-based. So, yeah, this is um, the beginning of their – Anthology series are uh, basically Star Wars stories. I think that's what they're calling them. Um, so these are going to be every two years. They're doing um, kind of spin-offs. It could be any story that takes place in the universe. So this one takes place right before A New Hope or the original Star Wars. Um, and it's about the, uh, the rebels stealing the plans for the Death Star so they can destroy it in Episode Four. I love the ones that go back. I love the, you know, I like when it does that. But my, my son was like, Mom, can, can we go to the midnight? You know, he's 17. He's like, you want to go to that mid, the midnight? You know, I'll find a midnight showing. So you're going to go to a midnight showing or just. <laughs> we have a 730 screen. Oh, you already got, you already have your tickets? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, you already, all right. 
That's awesome. It's awesome yeah. to see, you know, I mean, Star Wars will live on, I think. I don't think that's going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Yeah. I can't wait. And then episode eight is going to be incredible. I love Ryan Johnson, one of my favorite directors. Um, yeah, but the girl, I was watching an interview. The girl that's starring in it, she's English. Mm -hmm. Was she in it before? Uh for the um, the trilogy or the new one? For, she's in the new one, but I just wondered. I'd seen a current interview and they were talking uh, about Felicity Jones. And I was like, "Wait, was she in that before, or am I getting her mixed up with somebody? She was in it before. She was not in it before. Oh, oh okay. She's new. Hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I can't wait to see it either. But anyway, it's been so awesome talking to you. It really is, right. and I, I really yeah. appreciate your enthusiasm. And thank you for being on my show and for spreading everything you know and. When you're Steven yeah. Spielberg, you can come back and you can tell me all about <laughs> how that's going, okay? Okay, well, thank uh, you so much. Of, yeah, best of luck to you, okay? Thank you. Okay, bye. Hey, bye.